facilitated by Amy, uh, who's joining us as one of our colleagues from 350. So Amy uh, will take you through working with decision makers and she has um, a lot of uh, knowledge in this area. So over to you, Amy, to take us through this session. Muchas gracias. Eh, quiero corroborar que me escuchen. Thank you, everyone. I want to make sure that you can listen to me. I just want to share screen so everybody can hear me. Yes, okay, perfect. Gracias. Pues estoy muy emocionada de estar en esta... I'm very excited to be doing this presentation. I want to give thanks to Amira and 350.org for inviting me. Today's topic where we will be talking about decision makers. It's, this is a topic that I really enjoy and I like a lot. It's something I'm working with in my own job. So I'm super happy doing this, something that really I enjoy doing. And I hope that this knowledge is something that everyone can have because it's not something that should be it's not information that should be had only by those of us who work with this, but it should be a right to every person and it should be a right for everyone and not just for the policymakers. So this is a right that everyone should have and access that everyone should have in every country. I know that we're people from Puerto Rico and other countries in the Caribbean. And I know that everyone has their own laws and regulations, but as a universal aspect, it should be issues that since if people are making decisions on aspects that are impacting all of us, we should be able to have these tools and this voice so that we can be able to speak with our representatives. Perfect. I will be sharing my screen. So that we can go ahead and start the presentation. The first thing that I want to share and talk with you about is advocacy. And this is something very simple. This is the act or process to support or reject an issue. So when you imagine yourselves having an, a topic or an issue, I'm sure you're gonna, you've are gonna you worked with any social or environmental issue in your area, in your community, in your university or your organization, you realize that there is an issue and that there needs to be a solution. And sometimes the solution is present, but how do we work with this? How do we arrive and achieve this solution? Well, sometimes we get to do this with public policy. And so either we have to support something that's already happening or we have to reject it. And so we support it or reject it. If we support the intention of a decision maker, it can be a decision that has been taken or an action. For example, it can be the intention of that there is a, a bill, a political law, public law, maybe something that's already been uh, pushed forward, but it hasn't been approved. And it can maybe be someone who's a representative, a legislator or a resident or a citizen. But it can be something that can definitely create a positive or a negative situation, or it can be an action. Sometimes we think about advocacy as something that something that can only be done towards the government, but you can also work with it in a private institution. For example, in my job, we've sent letters to different institutes to a university, to a private university, and we send it also to a corporation because they were receiving funds from a company they were receiving company, they were receiving funds of a company and they were receiving them for funds and they were doing things supposedly for green gas issues. But we know that what they were actually doing was contradictory to what they were receiving funds for. And so with the cycles and patterns that they were carrying out. And so we went went ahead and actually sent them a letter. So you can actually send private institutions and demand that they take an action. Within the world of advocacy, 
there is different ways that you can work with advocacy. You can protest, you can do phone banking, where we say, call your legislators so that they approve such project or such bill. You can also do different investigations or different visits that we call lobbying. And we do these either the legislators or the different mayors of the respective towns or cities. This is something powerful also because people get to see the work. So this part of the phone banking also joins with the social media because we can use, for example, the Twitter platform and we can tag these decision makers and we can say, look, we need for you to vote in favor of such measure that is going to be able to say any particular issue and, or I want you to vote for anything that's renewable or energy. You can go ahead and do a public pressure through the social media. You can do different aspects that like we're doing right now, also trainings. And be able to take on these type of actions. You can also have one-on-one -on -one so that instead of lobbying, you do different one-on-one -on -one visits with specific representatives. You can, you can also call that lobbying, but sometimes it's one-on-one -on -one specific people that are in charge of making specific decisions, doing letters. Letters are very powerful. Doing interviews. Interviews can be on television or radio. It can also be through social media. The interviews are very powerful because you also want to move the public opinion of what is going on. We want people, the public, to know and be aware of what's going on and say, yes, this is something that bother, bothers me of what's happening. Or yes, look, this is a solution. Or this is something that such group is proposing. So many times what we have to move is a public opinion because then we can move the political opinion and politics. And this is something that can be very effective. We can do different lawsuits and that's part also of advocacy. There's also canvassing door to door when you want to share information of what's going on in that community. You can go door knocking door to door and also have flyers or letters and be able to share with people that live there everything that is going on and why you're going to their door, to their home, to inform them and what actions they can take. And you can also have community meetings. And we have a group of community people to be able to educate and take action on a certain issue. So you can do all of this. You can do all of this. You can do some of these. But basically the ideas and things that would work according to the issue that you're confronting and wanting to resolve. You can decide on all of these. And sometimes we have to do all of them. Sometimes you gotta do all of them in a series of steps, depending where the issue that you're confronting is at. For the impacts of this training, we're going to focus on the one-on-one -on -one meetings and how we work with them and some of lobbying. So lobbying here means one-on-one -on -one with some of the things that we'll be talking about. They can be interchangeable, These both of these concepts. So for lobbying, I'm not sure of each country here, but for Puerto Rico, the word lobbying, it's a negative word because we understand it as an act of illegal that basically puts on every person or or it's used by many people or many people use lobbying to actually cre create fraud or do corruption buying basically buying the politicians so that they're able to actually convince and buy the politicians to vote for what they want them. 
And so, but remember that lobbying is an action of influence the decisions of the policymakers. And remember, that's what we want to do because we have to remind something is impacting me. Maybe it's impacting me that the air is not clean or the water is not clean or that in my country, they want to bring more natural gas. And those are things that impact all of us. So we have the right and power to influence the decision makers. And as I was saying, on, on the prior slide, you can do it in different ways. For example, some of the things that we said in the earlier slide was, you can go ahead and take actions. So some of the things that we do when we are confronting an issue and I want to resolve it and I don't know how to or where to go, this is this series of steps, but in reality, it will not be happening in this order, not necessarily. So this is something that you have to keep very clear in your mind because this is a presentation of how to work with public policy and influence these type of decision makers. But, but in reality, there's different ways that can happen. Um, y nos miran y nos dicen, pero tú y quién más, ¿no? ¿Quién más está eh, peleando por esto? ¿Quién más quiere crear esta solución? Muchas veces no te van, te van a escuchar, pero no van a accionar sobre nada. Así que tú necesitas un grupo de personas que puedan ayudarte. Pueden ser personas de tu comunidad, pueden ser personas de tus estudios, de tu trabajo, de tu organización. Y son personas que se unen. And there is where we will be able to identify this. We can go ahead and do a whole training on this. And the best way to be able to do this is being able to ask, why is this happening? Who is allowing this? Nosotros tenemos un problema que eh, el gobierno quiere traer más gas natural a Puerto Rico. Y realmente tú puedes decir, bueno, ese es el problema que el gobierno... And where is, is it that people bringing the issue to Puerto Rico? Where is the root of the problem? Well, the root of the problem in Puerto Rico is that there is some energy laws that the natural gas will be used as a fossil of as a transition of fossil so the cost of the problem is not exactly what the government says generally it is what we need to amend is the law so this is where we have to go ahead and actually get into the root of the problem i'm not giving you a real case but maybe there is a, a law maybe it's an agency an institution or maybe it's a mayor's office or maybe the president that hasn't signed the law. So you have to be able to assess where is the issue, what steps or phase the issue is in so that you can create your own steps of advocacy. Look at where, what are the solutions? This is different, this is very hard because we have to look at how it is that we have to figure this out. This many times gets debated a lot. That's why you have to have a lot of allies to be able to reach a consensus and be able to see what are the solutions in what rhythm, in what steps do we work these solutions and how these solutions can actually shift throughout time? What are the needs that we have as a group? Sometimes the needs that we have, we know the problems, we know where the problem is, but we don't have the research or the investigations that are necessary. This is a real example, for example, that we knew renewable energy in Puerto Rico, but we need a study, a particular investigation of how we actually can do this, how we can actually integrate renewable energy in Puerto Rico. So when we begin to identify our needs, we can actually go ahead and identify these different blanks that we have, these blank spaces that we have in our research. And there we begin to look at people to influence. And in another slide, later on, we'll look at that. And then we begin to look at 
where are the different levels of participation with our different allies? Because there can be people who can help plan the plan for advocacy, but they're not necessarily the ones who will directly be doing the direct advocacy. And that's perfectly fine because everyone, we can go ahead and organize ourselves in different ways. And we always, I always want to emphasize on this area because we often think that we have to do this work. In having allies is we can actually be able to have the capacity, we can have and look at the capacity that everyone has and that it actually does not fall only in one person. One of the things that we have to think about is who can help us solve the problem. This requires a lot of investigation for us to do. And many times we have to talk with many people so that we're actually able to know where the root problem is. Sometimes we can speak with a mayor, a legislator, a governor or president, or an agency or a particular ministry institution. And this is a very important piece because imagine if you go to a legislator and you say, I want there to be more renewable energy in Puerto Rico. And, and I say in Puerto Rico, but in your specific respective country and the legislator says, oh, that's great. Thank you so much for bringing this concern. But we already created a law on this. So then you have to go to the agency that works with the energy aspects because they can say, oh, we already went ahead and sent a bill or a regulation and the legislator there can say not, they can't say much on that. So now you have to go to the agency. Now this is an investigation that you have to do. You have to know where the root problem is located because it doesn't matter how you much go, how many times you go to the legislator office, if the cause of the problem is not in that legislative assembly office, so there's nothing that the legislator that can that can do or very little. So it's very important who actually can help or support and in what office. The objective, this is something that's so important. After you have selected or not selected, but identify the problem and what are the possible solutions you identify who are the people who can support you? Is it on the executive branch? Is it on the agency level or the legislative level? So now basically you can say, what is the objective? What do you want to achieve? I want them to support a certain issue. I want them to reject it. I want them to implement something. Some, there may be already a law. Maybe there may be a regulation, but it's not being implemented, which often is what happens. Maybe something is already in existence. Sometimes what we want to do is educate, not so much of a decision making, but basically educate on what we're talking about. For example, in the type of work that I do, there's people that go to the mayor's office to talk with the mayors and educate them about renewal or energy. For example, we're not asking them to do anything, but the decision is not necessarily on them but we're going to have these conversations with them because this is part of advocacy, educate and orient them. Or maybe you're looking for support for an event on your particular cause or issue and you want to have them, maybe you want to have certain specific people in, in your event. And this can be controversial depending on what type of event or issue that you're working with and who may you want there or not. But when you want the support of some legislator or mayor, it gives you a little bit more of support. But maybe if you have a mayor with a particular political party, well, maybe other mayors or other representatives from the same political party in other towns or other locations may also want to join in and support something that you're already pushing forward. What are the roles? Something that once you've identified the problem, the solutions and the people that you are identifying, 
Now you want to identify who will be organizing all this lobbying and one-on-one -on -one decision making with the decision makers. Who will be participating from the organizing group? Who will be organizing the information? Who will be making and organizing the materials, the training? Sometimes when we're wanting to do, for example, in Puerto Rico, when we want to do a lobbying day, and in Puerto Rico, there's more of 70 legislators. I don't know, in other countries, it's too many for only two people, for example, to go ahead and do this lobbying. So sometimes we have to do trainings and in terms of doing these type of webinars, and we have to do them in terms of being able to go and talk to these legislators. So the trainings are very important. Who will be making the call? So before going to visit the legislators or the mayors or the presidents, we have to call and make appointments. We have to explain why we want this appointment. Who makes the letter? Who calls? Who does follow up? Because sometimes we call and no one answers. No one picks up. No one wants to give us an appointment. And that happens often and in different ways. And so when we have the appointment is to think who, how, and we'll be organizing. If there's information missing, who will get it and who will be able to participate? So understanding that not everyone who will be participating in that one-on-one -on -one or lobbying day will necessarily be the same people who will be organizing. That will depend on each one of you and on your own group and the organizing so that it's important to understand that everything that's here not one person is the one taking all this so that there can be at least five people doing all of this because in reality, there's a lot of time that is taken in organizing all of this. In that 30 minute meeting uh, that you want to have means that you may have one week or two weeks of prior work. You want to create materials, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, but you want to create briefs or summaries of information that you want to have from your investigation to show up. So I mentioned materials. What are these materials? So one of the things that you want to have, these are the materials that you want to have present in your appointment. Now you've gotten your appointment, you've called and they said yes, and they're gonna welcome you and there you'll be able to have a meeting with your legislator or mayor. So what are the things that you want to take to them? So one, you're gonna take a one pager memo and on this memo or this one pager, you are going to summarize what are the main points of the problem that you want to resolve or maybe the solution of the problem. And what you want to do is propose to them the solutions. And this will be a one pager, maximum two pages, something that's very brief, summarized into bullet points. Imagine if you take your mayor or legislator or your president and you take a whole study case, an investigation of 300 pages. Remember, you're making this appointment, you're facilitating this information, but there's other groups. There's other people bringing information about water, energy, social issues, human rights. You're not the only person doing this type of work. So we have to summarize. And in Puerto Rico, like we say, like basically chew this information, be able to give it already a little bit more processed and be able to offer this information. And they say, do you have any additional information? And you say, of course, I have additional information and I'm going to share it with you. You can ask for an email. Many times the offices are far away from where we live. So it's better to send them electronically. And once you send that information, you can go ahead and call them and say, look, I went ahead and mail them, email them this information. So I'm calling to confirm that you've gotten it. And if they say that they, if they haven't received it, you send it again. I send information sometimes and they say they haven't received it. And sometimes I'm sending it three times because sometimes they never see it. And sometimes that can happen. And so don't lose your patience and, and being able to say, don't worry, I'll go ahead and send it again. When we visit the different offices, they want to know who you are, who do you represent? They want information of you. 
Maybe sometimes you want to be contacted. You want to have a contact sheet where it says the name, the email, the phone number, and the organization that you represent. And you leave that. And so if they want to contact you, or have a follow-up meeting, they can contact you through this contact sheet. And lastly, having an additional information, as you can see that I put it here in a smaller font, because sometimes people focus on taking additional information, but no, because this is in reality something that you can do after your appointment. Or if you're gonna take information, like for example, a study, an investigation case of 20 pages or more, first have the memo. Yes, this is a must that you must have the one pager. The additional information, the complementary information, you will go ahead and do it or provide it afterwards. It is optional. In this one pager, for example, you want to be able to have answered one question. This one pager or two pager maximum, you want to answer this question. Why should them, you should fill out this blank statement here. Why should the mayor or anyone that you're, you're deciding make a decision about the problem or solution that you're tackling? And it definitely should be a structure of three to five paragraphs. And also at the end, have a list of endorsement. It can be the logos of the organizations. It can be the name of the organizations or the name of the people who are definitely, or the communities who are endorsing. And this is very, endorsements are very important. And this whole structure is very important because it shows that you're not alone and that other people are with you and that they're also mobilizing themselves. And this gives you a power, a strength to document and to what you're speaking of. And remember that the way that we're talking about, about renewable energy, there's other groups that are doing exactly the same, but in the opposite side, they're countering and they're going against renewable energy. So at the end, it may be that you do all of this and sadly the legislators or the decision makers will not go in favor of what you're saying, but you'll go ahead and start to letting them know that you are actually watching and that you're many. How many people? Well, that's going to depend. Sometimes there's not many people that do not know or endorse. Or because of time, they you won't be able to get a lot of signatures. But, you know, use the petition, petition online. Use it and, and spread it through the social media and then print that. And that would be a physical, if you're gonna have a physical face-to-face, -face, and then on your on your one page or on your memo, you can go ahead, how many people endorse that memo, that one pager? And that it was done on that social media or that application of petition.org or sign signature.org. And you, that way you can have a higher and deeper outreach. Before the meeting day, this is this next pieces will be before, during, and after. So before the meeting day, you will request a meeting. I will very, very much emphasize on trying because we will try and often we will not get the appointment. If you don't get the appointment, there's not an issue. Go ahead that day. You'll go ahead that day and say, you know what, I have this, you tell them, you know what, I have this issue and I want to speak with my representative and I want to expose this issue. Who can I speak with? Sometimes who you will be able to speak with won't be the direct decision maker, but it will be a staff person from the office, an advisor or the secretary person or we're in a, with an assistant. Sometimes that's what's gonna happen and that's not a problem. You go ahead and talk as if that was your representative and in that meeting, we can say, oh yes, you know, I've, we've talked about you, I would still like to speak with the representative. Be able to study the decision maker. 
This is what's called in English power macking. We won't talk about it so deeply, but basically you're going to study the decision maker. You're going to basically do a power analysis and study who are they? Where are they at in terms of the renewal or energy? That's who you're talking to about. That's what you're talking about. So, but maybe they are against it. So we'll start looking at their opposition or what is their position? Maybe it's looking at the different interviews that that person has been public about. Or maybe if it's a mayor, what regulation has the mayor done to achieve that? What actions have they done? Some mayors, for example, do events for in, 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 in pro of environmental um, issues. Maybe they're in favor, not always. Maybe they're more, if they are, they're maybe more in favor of your own issue, your own cause. So you'll do a list and you're looking at more or less what is the narrative of that decision maker? And that allows you to write the memo, the one pager, because sometimes there may be people that in Puerto Rico, for example, it is said, we can say, uh, some people say, oh, we need natural gas as a trans transitional fossil. Well, then we know if we, if that person is in favor of that, you can say, I know that you're in favor of this, but you know what, natural gas has not brought us, and I have evidence that it has not brought us any goodness. It, in Puerto Rico, we always say that basically natural gas will basically going to impact our energy bill and the, in, in the electricity will be impacted. And so basically being able to explain that this is not going to help, obviously also with the environmental impact and people's health. And you, at the interview, at the, at the appointment, you say, yes, I'm in, I know that you're in favor, but history shows us that this has actually has not helped, has not allowed us to save in any way. And you basically confront them in their position and address that by saying your position and what it is. So the meeting day, this will vary if this will be a one-on-one, -on -one, if it's gonna be a lobbying day completely. I want you to do like the exercise with me is imagine you're arrived to the office, you have your appointment, three of you go together and you go and do your cause, your speak about your cause, your topic, your issue. And the first thing you want to do is present yourself. Hi, greetings. My name is Amy. I'm part of this organization and we are here to talk about renewal energy. Right. And so we say, look, we have an appointment with such politician today and it's to talk about this particular issue and you present it and the, if the other people present themselves so that way everyone knows who they are. Another thing to do is to be able to explain when you come in and being able to say, please come in sit right here. Maybe if you're doing a lobbying day, sometimes you won't even be allowed to go into the office, but maybe all you get to, as far as you get to is the assistant's office and you have to just stay, stand there and nobody wants to allow you to go into the office. Sometimes that can happen, but it doesn't matter what the scenario is. You go focus that you're going to, you're going to speak about your issue. And this, the main points will be written in the memo and your one page and you will repeat it over and over. You'll ask for a specific decision. If you're going to do a very educational legislative visit, this legislative educational day is very specific where you educate, but you don't ask for a specific action. So, but when you're going to go lobby, you can request a very specific decision and you are going to go and provide and tell them that why you're going against the natural gas as a transitional fossil fuel. And we want a law that limits the entrance into my country of this fa fossil fuel. And sometimes this happens a lot it, as lobbyists and decision makers where they get out of, they go on a tangent get off topic. And what you can do is stay on topic. And sometimes we're talking about one topic and they 
say, oh, yes, that's really important that you're talking about this. And it's also very important. And then they start talking about something random, something that has nothing to do with what you're saying. And you say, well, thank you so much that you're bringing that very important issue. That's why, and you go back to your topic. That's why we bring this one pager, this information, because we want to be able to talk to you about this issue about natural gas. And you bring it back. You bring it back. And if that person, that conversation, that person goes off tangent, you bring it back. Don't continue going off tangent with that person. Because they won't be bringing that. If you go off tangent, they won't be helping you in any way. And the person will forget or won't be, or will be avoiding and they won't offer you any help. And this happens very often. And this can happen because the person may not know what they're talking about or they don't want that you ask them to take a decision. So in a very conscious way, try to, they will try to deviate and go off tangent. So you bring it, stay on topic. And you ask, maybe you offer your help. Do you need us to do a webinar? Do you need more information? Do you want us to say this more to other majors? How can I help you? We would like for us to, for you to uh, do an amendment on this law or to implement this regulation that already exists. And finally, you give thanks. The person for the time that has been offered. And we always do a follow-up day. And that follow-up day can be the next day, but try to make sure that it's not more than a week. You will go ahead and distribute yourself. And I forgot to say this on the meeting day. One of the things that you need to do is you want to be able to ask for a specific email and make sure that you always to all, you want to make sure to always ask the emails to the assistants also. Imagine who all the causes and all the memos and everything or additional information that gets sent to the legislator. And that's in public information, but not everyone writes to the, the legislator's information email is public. So everyone gets that, but not everyone writes to the assistant's office, to the specific assistant. So you say, look, I want to send you specific additional information. Can you provide me with your email? in your name and you write it down. When you write it down in that follow-up sheet, you will go ahead and follow up. You will go ahead and follow up and write an email with giving thanks and with the additional information. You will also organize the collected information. Sometimes there's a lot of information there. You will go ahead and organize the collected information and, and see what you got. For example, I about a week ago, we're in the legislation office and we were advocating for the debt from the energetic authority, the electrical energetic authority in Puerto Rico. And then an advisor comes that basically there is something that's happening with one of the regulations and that's being violated. And I write it down and I say, such legislator is doing this effort. Maybe it's not the effort that I became to talk about, but be attentive to that because maybe that's something that I'm interested in and talk about it in another meeting. So that information is really important. So keep tallies on that. Maybe that decision maker, ha, you know, says, you know, look, I'm gonna, we're going to have an event and we're going to be part of this conversation. Or look, there'll be this initiative. So please be present. So this information, please copy that. Not everyone can do a press release, but press release can often be something that can move public opinion. I don't know if in your country, but in, in, in the public, it's basically it says, oh, who they say, like, what does your organization do? I never hear what you're doing, but I know that I like, what are you doing? Or what, what is it that you're doing? People use also social media. That's also really important. And sometimes, sometimes we don't we don't communicate through that. But but when we do issues of advocacy, it is important because people are finding out, and they realize. Look, 
there's such certain group that is advocating for this. And so you want to be able to move the public opinion so that there is an impact on the decision makers or that we can get more allies, people who want to join our forces and being able to join our social media to be able to create this pressure. And then you're going to meet back up with your coalition or your organization to be able to decide on what are the next steps. It can be doing another event, inviting new information, being able to do different types of events that have to do with lobbying. And in these next steps, I'm going to go back for a quick moment or a lot back. One of the things that you can do that you can do in this meeting, what are the next steps? Or maybe you want to send letters or maybe you want to have community meetings. You want to visualize what, what are the next steps that are necessary. Something that I learned is that when nothing is happening, public policy is that then there's something big happening. So basically making sure that nothing happens when nothing's happening. So we want to be able to use that as an opportunity so that be cable can say we're like we can say, look, we have an issue with climate change in our country is not doing anything. We don't necessarily have to wait for something to be happening. It can be something that, for example, the, to the contrary, nothing is happening and we can actually use that moment to say, we need to act on this. And here we are available and we have the information, we have the solutions and you are giving us your back. You're not supporting this. So this is everything till now. I, I, I see that up to now, I see that we have questions and answers. We have 10 minutes. I'm going to stop sharing screen and that way we can go ahead and have a conversation together. I don't know if anyone has a question or wants to speak about their own experience that is also very important to be able to enrich ourselves with the information, with the experiences of other folks. Rosalina. Thank you, cordial greetings from Puerto Rico. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Thank you so much for supporting us and educating us. In my classes, my dreams are in science classes, is that what is introduced is from a, an environmental perspective because our young people have the potential to be able to defend what is ours. So let's try that this be that this be uh, included as environmental climate justice. As I was a teacher. When I was working with my students, so thank you to 350.org who did different, you know, times where we met together. Thank you to Amira and who contacted us and made us and, uh, participants in those initiatives. Students would protest, they felt alone. And I talked about that they could also be able to do the exercise with somebody else because sometimes these uh, questions are you have to be part of collectives, but sometimes you're not, you don't, you are. So if you're not, how can you go ahead and do it? How can you have a dialogue with these dialogues when they feel that they're alone? When they go to basically ask for something that's being impacted with our environment. My apologies, I wasn't mute. I think that this part, I think this part of many of us have felt in that way, being able to focus and emphasize all the struggles that have happened in the past. And sometimes those struggles and, and that history happen by one person and said, there's a problem and we want to resolve something. And sometimes we want to resolve or want solutions from one day to another, but sadly that doesn't happen. We want public policy. The term of public policy is actually, it takes years. 
two to three years to actually carry themselves out. So when we start a campaign of public policy, we have to understand and have a timeline that the response will not be fast because there's different processes. Sometimes it passes by, by the decision makers who are decision makers, they don't want to resolve this. And that's a reality. But throughout this time and this process of time that is happening, we can go ahead and work on it in terms of people who can we talk to, that we can educate them, young people that we want to resolve a problem close to our communities with our people and that people can actually talk to the group. And throughout time, we're creating a support group with each other, which sometimes that's what happens. And so sometimes with that support group, that's how we can achieve things, but it, really to understand that it's going to take time. And of course, we don't want that to happen, but we actually need much more of a faster process and, and turnaround. But often there's been, you know, I've been part of different campaigns throughout many years and it's, we've achieved solutions due to the mobilization and time with people. Yeah, one of the, one of the examples that I gave was of one young woman who sat down and said, you know, what they wanted to do and that, and that you know, we'll be able to give this hope and that you do it little by little. Yeah, and also to be able to think about the, the past, the history, how things used to be about 10 or 20 years in particular issues and where they're at now. And of course, there's many things that were still behind, but there's many things that were also ahead in and that we don't realize or, or recognize and be able to emphasize that look at how things were before and now we're in the month of pride how people express themselves with people who are not heterosexuals and now how people speak and express themselves so there's a clear difference of the so that non-heterosexual people uh, don't suffer the same violence that was suffering before. And so being able to think about that because that ex happens exactly in the same way with the environmental aspects and those different lessons and history is there. And we have to keep on fighting for that. If anyone else, any other questions, comments, I, I always like to listen to the stories of people in it, elaborating them in any sort of way. So one of the things that I recommend in all of this is I know that many times we feel fear or we feel intimidated by these decision makers or these people because often they make this purposely. They try to intimidate us and always talking from our experience. It's always important and to know that you're on the right side of history and always be trusting in yourself and on each other and not depend. And this is something that's very important. I say it as if it was very easy, but not being able to depend on what the other party is going to say. Sometimes the other party on the other side is not in agreement with what you're saying. And you have to know that that's going to be happening. The fact that they are in disagreement means that we are wrong. And the important is the important thing is that if we're afraid, we're afraid. But the second time and the third time, it's going to be less and less. But as long as we're able to continue talking about this issue. And those are the recommendations that I can give you. And lastly, is something that I, I've shared with you here is a, a, a summary of all the different things that can be done. And that every experience that I've had in advocacy, every everything, every time has been different. Not one has been the same. So 
please in this process you're always learning and being able to have your open mind to be able to learn of all these different experiences of how to move forward this public policy stuff I think I have finished my presentation. I don't know if there's any further questions or comments. Ami, I wanted to do a highlight on the characteristics of the group so that it's what's taken is also this concept of patience. So for example, we have achieved some appointments um, with some decision makers. And when we went, they actually, they didn't show up or, and basically, you know, we said, oh, you know, like the representatives or, you know, the different people that we were going to meet and they were, they felt disappointed. And so being able to know what it is that they have to do. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> my mic was muted from my headphone. I'm really sorry. Uh, I was saying thank you so much, Amy, for all the wonderful insights you shared. Uh, just you have so much experience with working with decision makers, and I've learned so much from your presentation. Um, I see persons um, agree in the chat that they've definitely learned a lot as well. And I do hope it is um, uh, we're able to uh, practice it in our work. So yeah, if there are any other last comments from anyone, feel free to share, but I just want to say thank you all so much for joining us this evening. And thank you so much again, Amy. Gracias a ustedes por tenerme acá y espero poder coincidir en algún momento en el futuro. Gracias. Yeah, definitely. We would love that. Daria, eso. So, this brings us to the end. Uh, Shonda, I'm not sure if you're speaking. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yes. Just, good night, buenas noches. Thank you. This is the end, right? Farewell. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, thank you all so much. Take care. Have a good night, everyone. Be safe. Gracias, de igual forma. Gracias por la experiencia. Thank you for everything. Thank you for this experience.